Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky and I am super excited to be joined for this episode by Heather and Carolina. Hi friends. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, so I'm really excited about this topic, but it's a little something different for us. We haven't really mm -hmm. done something like this, right? We haven't. No, we haven't. It'll um, be interesting to see how this conversation goes. So we have very loose guidelines here, people. And so just stick with us. We promise you some book recs, uh, but probably a shade of chaos to go along with it. Mm -hmm. um, so for our term of the week this week actually plays into what we're talking about. Um, so on this episode of Buzzing About Romance, we are talking all about settings of stories and the places we would like to travel based on some of the books we've read. But we're also going to talk about some tips and tricks when you are traveling when it comes to um, books. Like, you know, it's not like the old days where we used to have to try to cram 18 books into our carry-on luggage mm -hmm. now that we have ebooks. But Carolina mm -hmm. has some tips and tricks. And, um, We'll talk a very about, one important one. <laughs> we'll talk about reading on vacation. Um, so the term of the week this week is a, is setting. So this is a place or type of surrounding where something is positioned or where an event takes place. So an example would be cozy waterfront cottage in a peaceful country setting. Um, when it comes to reading, when I say setting, we are talking about where the story takes place. But I do think oftentimes, especially in romance, setting can sometimes, people sometimes think of setting as a trope. Yep. Which it can be for like small town. It's primarily a small town, right? Like, or- but big city, New York City. Or, yeah, big city. Mm -hmm. I, as I category, like I have a, on Goodreads, a shelf for small town or big city. Yeah, and I have a setting for New York City and a setting for like San Francisco or, um, you know, Pacific Northwest or something like that. So I do think, at least in romance, we kind of mix the setting in with tropes. I okay. Think. Um, so like I said, in this episode, we're going to talk all about settings um, and the places we want to go based on these settings. Um, so sometimes we are given a book by authors where the setting is a real place, right? And sometimes they're made up. And I'm sure that lots of times the settings are kind of um, glorified, made better than they are because I think of like in a jam by Kate Canterbury like it's friendship Rhode Island it's in the country in a small town it's on a farm and there are like animals farms are not glamorous places no and it's friendship not. doesn't really exist but I you know I live in Ohio and we have farms but I think that farm in friendship Rhode Island is way better than any farm here in northwest Ohio so I actually really love like made up places. I love when an author just is like, oh, we're in the South. And then they don't really give me like a location because then I can pretend it's not hot and humid and I'm not miserable while I'm there. The other thing, authors, I implore you, um, give me a map. If you're going to write a small town, give me a map. I can't read a map to save my life, but I will love you for the map that you do give me. <laughs> Melissa Foster does that quite a bit. She gives you maps and it's, it's my favorite. It's quite fun. Um, I love it. I actually got the uh, Silver Island mouse pad map, which. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I just say, oh, you can thank me for that because I, um, I'm going to brag a little bit because I wanted that as a mouse pad and I looked at her store and I, and it was on a mug. It was on a t-shirt and it wasn't there. So I messaged her and I'm like, Melissa Foster. I need it on a mouse pad. Yeah. So I have it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's so awesome. I love it. And honestly, I would have 17 mouse pads if authors like, um, to be honest, like Sawyer Bennett's The Bull, which is the mm. Pittsburgh 
Titans hockey arena that she talks about, right? Doesn't she call it the bowl? The bowl. Yep. I would love like an architectural um, drawing of what she imagines it to look like. I would take that sticker. I would take that mouse pad. You could have all my money. Like I think about having, you know, how like hockey players have like a room with their jerseys and like we have a big whatever of the, we call it the bank here and it's where the golfers play. I would love that. Like a really pretty like piece hand drawn. That'd be great. So you're good on that. So you're good on that. Right. (laughs) Uh, But I think it's so, okay. But here's another question when it comes to this. Do you get excited when you read a book that's about a place that you've been or is about an area when you live in? For example, I live in Ohio and Jennifer Cruzy, who is an author that wrote back in the 90s, I don't think she's currently publishing. um, She used to write all her stuff take place in Ohio. She used uh, the Victorian village or the German village down in Columbus, Ohio for settings of one of her books. She also did... um, she made up a small town north of Cincinnati called Temptation. And I loved it because, like, I knew these places she was describing. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like it's a double-edged sword. And there are some times when the author does it well that you're like, nope, this is great. This is, I know this restaurant. I know the street. I know exactly what they're talking about. But then the times you're just, like, it breaks your heart is when they do a description of something that's not factual. For example, (laughs) I grew up in San Diego. I get excited because, you know, LA is in books a lot and everything like that. But no, San Diego, not as much, but every now and then it'll be there. Well, our particular author had the, um, one of the settings at one of the beaches in San Diego. And they talked about the big waves at this beach and everything. Well, this particular beach doesn't have big waves. It's one of the calmest beaches in San Diego because it's the way it's set. It's more like a a bay. It's not called a a bay, but it's just more of an inlet. It's more of an inlet. It's protected and things like that. So you don't have the waves. And so you're just that breaks the story for me. And it breaks a level of trust to a certain degree that you're like, this is not real. Like, are are you like, are you looking at this? And I know the authors don't live there. Or the author doesn't live there. Like, are, are you wanting to, are you doing this over internet research? What are you doing? Yeah. Because like, this is not true. So like for me at that point, I have to just, um, I have to pretend it's in a different city. So I just don't get pissed. <laughs> well, I had a recent book <laughs> that was supposed to take place up in Michigan on the coast of one of the Great Lakes. She didn't say if it was Superior. She didn't say if it was Lake Michigan, but she referred to the town as Coastal. Now, I live in Ohio, but we used to visit Michigan a lot growing up. We vacationed there with our kids. I I don't know anyone that lives in a Great Lakes state that refers to the towns beside the lake um, as coastal towns. I no, believe we call them shore. lakesides. <laughs> yeah. That well, city is lakeside. Lake, lakes don't have a coast. We have shoreline. Right. Which is, I think... Being from the Midwest, um, I think people think that we're just flyover states and that there is nothing cool or interesting where we live. And that is super false. So when I find a book and an author that writes about the Midwest um, and they do it accurately, it makes me very happy because I love reading about like Wisconsin or Illinois, Minnesota, and then like Marie Johnson does a great job of writing about North Dakota. Yeah, it just was one of those like, and it's stupid. It's stupid persnickety. It's one word in a book. I should have been able to let it go. But honest to goodness, I ended up DNFing the book because I could not let it go. Or like, I just had to change the city's name in my head. Because I like I couldn't I was getting frustrated because my head was stuck on that one element of it. Uh, 
So I would it just depends. I had the same thing. I was reading a book set in Minnesota and they were talking about like these two cities that are literally four to six hours apart from each other, four hours. And they were like right next door. I was like, mm, no, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah, We're not reading that. <laughs> well, then there's, let's take um, one of a great example. Becky, we read Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden. Yes. That takes place in Culver City. Has now, a map. It has, has a, map a map in the front of the ebook. And I was Googling, I was Googling up the locations left and right. And like, I was doing a whole virtual tour as I was listening and reading the book, like, because she changed the know. names of the restaurants in the bookstore because it was based on the Rip yeah. Bodice bookstore, which is a romance bookstore in Culver City. Um, so yeah. she changed that name, but it was absolutely something she had walked in Los Angeles. And I have to tell you, you guys, I've become friends with Lucy Eden on Instagram. <laughs> I love her. Like, she is funny and sassy. And just you wait. She actually sent me a really super cute mug. And this episode, I think, drops when the book box stops selling. But have you seen the book box that she's offering? Melissa Foster is in it. Like, there are some sham wow authors in this book box that she put together. Anyway, I'm just telling you, if you're not following Lucy Eden on Instagram, you absolutely should be because she's a gem. Well, and you should read the book. Too. And read the book. <laughs> because it, it really is fun. It's it's a subtle, um, like the city, Culver City becomes a character in this story. Yeah. Um, another author who does that quite a bit is Jiffy Kate. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Their books are a love letter to New Orleans. They really are. And it's are. wonderful. Like I want I want to do a tour with them in New Orleans. Can they do a big like weekend retreat and we just so go to all the places? They did that pre-COVID. <laughs> they haven't done it since COVID, but I would be into that. I love New Orleans. So Yeah. And really I just want to go to all the places and eat the food that they talk about. Exactly. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, another author that does this kind of thing, she does more renames the places. And we just got a chance to talk to her was Melanie Harlow. Like, her books are all based in Michigan. I know the towns she's talking about. But she changes them, makes them a little bit more her own. But they're based gra mm. geographically. And kind of the bits of the town are absolutely based on these small towns in northern Michigan. And they're great, fun towns. And she brings, Northern Michigan is a really special place. Like, you know, you've got both Superior and Lake Michigan and um, the UP, you know, Mackinac Island. These are great, fun places. And she uh -huh. brings in some of the fun things that happen up there. For example, in, I think it's the Bellamy Creek books, they talk about Petoskey stones, which are, you know, stones that have been polished by Lake Superior that you find washed up on the beach in Traverse City or in Petoskey. Uh, she talks about like the cherry trees that are Traverse City, Michigan. Anyway, it's a place I'd go. But her places that she does are kind of made up based off these places. Or um, Carrie Elks in her Wintervale series. Okay, so I'm still amazed at Carrie Elks. So if you want to talk about an <laughs> author, this, this floors me. Okay, so she she has a, it's called Angel Sands, which is a West Coast series that takes place between Los Angeles and San Diego in a little beach town, village, like a surf village. So she has that series. But the rest of all her books take place on the East Coast, Virginia, and West Virginia area. And we were talking to Lindsay, who's one of our hosts here on the podcast and Lindsay's from Virginia and she read these books and she's like she gets it she gets the towns the layouts the way the people act like the drive of going into West Virginia from Virginia like she gets it so we start doing research because we did a happy hour with her which you can go back and watch that on YouTube she's from England you guys well, and she also, but I mean, she spent what was it like six years? Two years, I think. Two years. Two years so, in Northern she spent Virginia. Some time in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she took a lot from that time because it, it's in her books, and she creates this 
Winterville location, it's everything you want in a small town that also happens to celebrate the Christmas year round. I love that um, series. And yeah, you just like, when can I book my reservation? I want to stay at the inn. <laughs> I want to go see a show. Yeah. I want to go to the Christmas tree farm because I need to see North chopping wood. And... <laughs> If we get to go to a fictional place, then I'm going to the Highland series by Jessica Peterson. They have a resort and it's owned by former NFL players. And it is like amazing and stellar. So, and I want to go. I'll be your think... plus one. Can I be okay, your plus one? Good. We'll go. Okay, thanks. So the Highlands, it takes place in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I think the Highlands in North Carolina are considered like the Asheville area. Yep. Asheville. Yeah, and there's lots of really cute places. Like if you've never been to the Biltmore estate, mm -hmm. that's in that area. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of cute bed and breakfasts and vacation rentals in that area. Um, but you want to book at her exact resort is what you're saying. I would. Like the way she <laughs> describes it. So it's like this big, huge resort. And then they have these little houses. And then there's like there's cabins that you can rent. And then they do like bonfires and then like the food that she describes and the wine and then one of the the sister married a guy who is a distiller and it's just and then it ties into her southern series which is set in charleston mm, and that's yeah. all around food and she ties that in and it's just so great um so if we're talking places we want to absolutely visit i would like to go to the south Pacific south pacific to tahiti in particular but to the resort that helena hunting describes in hooking up it's an all-exclusive armstrong hotel because that's the family's name and she talks about the huts that are the you know like on the water with the glass floor decks and you can just jump off your balcony and go right into the water like sign me up also, I hear there's like lots of sexy men there that do and are dirty talkers. So, you know. I mean, maybe we can put together like a little book convention. There. <laughs> just I, an idea. We just well, think, okay. Can we can we talk about like I want to go on vacation with the Coopers from um, Natasha Madison's oh, series? Yes. Like, <laughs> because all of their extravagant vacations. I like how you okay. just rent like all these beach houses. <laughs> like, I would like yeah. to go, but I'm not sure I want to ride on a plane with those people because they're a lot of work. <laughs> I think the people watching would be I know, hilarious. So, and they wouldn't even notice. There's so <laughs> many of them. They would just yeah, welcome yeah. you in. They're like, yeah, they wouldn't the notice. Plan. They'd be like, who are they? And they're like, oh, don't worry. We have an extra cabin for you. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> yes. Sign me up. You can sleep here. They have got an extra room. <laughs> I no. also. For real. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> um, what about a wedding in Natasha Madison's Southern Wedding Series? I think they take place in Tennessee. It's a small town outside Nashville. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have that series down, too. She's got two Southern Series. That I'm not 100% sure where they are, but it really makes it sound fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, even like I mean, weddings. <laughs> I, um, as you know, I enjoy a cowboy romance. And so there are like ranches that I would love to go to just because, you know, I know it's a lot of work and the books kind of glorify you just want to write a, a cowboy. Bit. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um but i but i th i'm I at a horse she doesn't want to run cowboy yeah Wait. yeah she does no, i want well mm, okay um <laughs> moving right along <laughs> um but i think there's also some great qualities to see like a highly functioning family run ranch sure. mm -hmm. um there's it like Moss Creek of the Cowboys of Moss Creek or Cowboy Classifieds, depending on where you look it up from Janice Whitaker or Melissa Foster's Redemption Ranch, because that one also has um, therapy horses and which I think is really interesting. Basically any, so that is something I think Melissa Foster does incredibly well. 
She world builds like nobody's business. Oh, yes. Silver Island. Then you have her Oak. Is it Oak Creek? The, that's the Baden and the Montgomery's that are in mm. or Hope Harbor. I don't know. She has like she has tons of them. She has tons of them. She has one series that's in Virginia. She has another that's in Maryland. She has another that's up in Massachusetts. And then she's got the island, the Silver Island, which is Cape Cod. And then she's got series out in Denver. But the way she builds these places and these communities, like the they coffee so sh- real. the coffee shop on Silver Island or the bar if you read the last Steel Brother or Steel Family book that came out he's part of a motorcycle club and they go to a bar that's kind of on a pier and mm-hmm. I'm like I'm in I am in it sounds Let's great and it has like a skate park in the town for the kids and competitions it just Melissa Foster builds her worlds so well. And I think it also helps her. I mean, everything is interconnected. Her world just it expands, which I think helps her too. Um, because there's, which is really interesting in that you can pick up her books like in different series and just pick up locations versus an author who will do one series in one location and then the next series completely change locations like yeah. so it's it's a different reading experience i will say going back to natasha madison her series that's in dallas her hockey series mm-hmm. the way they buy houses so easily if you talk to anybody that lives in dallas the housing market isn't that easy like it takes <laughs> well when you months. have that money no we have the money right? but it takes months to find a house a lot of people in denver or in uh, dallas will buy old houses tear them down and build from the ground up so they can be inside the loop versus well, outside the loop. Good thing we get to live in a fictional world, right? right? So <laughs> yes. speaking of Texas, um, I, you know, Texas is Texas. Um, there are so many series that are set in Texas, like um, Wilder Brothers. Like I want to go there. And hang out with the Wilder Brothers. I just want to go to the yeah. tasting room and eat uh, yeah. the food that the one sister-in-law makes and sit yes. and have girl chats with the ladies. Like, Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd i be okay if I saw the guys, but the women I for sure want to hang out with. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of series and books that take place in Texas that I'm like, yeah, I could like be there for a good long time and hang out with all my favorite people. <laughs> Um, Sierra Cartwright, she writes BDSM romances and there's a family ranch outside, um, Dallas and it talks about, you know, driving up to the gates and the big iron gates opening and, you know, the, like, hello, Dallas, the TV show, (laughs) like I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Another place I'd like to go, and it's one that we don't talk about a lot, is Alaska. There's not a ton of books in Alaska. Uh-uh. But Jack and Jacinda Wilder have the Bad Brothers and the Good Sisters that take place in Kaketchum, Alaska. And I want to go to the Bad Bar, and I kind of want to <laughs> have a tattoo from <laughs> the place down the street. Anyway. I have a really weird place that I want to go, but I am more of like a homebody. And like, I, if I go on vacation, I don't really want to go, go, go. Like, I feel like I want to slow down because my life is go, go, go. I want to go to Vermont. There are so many amazing, like Vino and Veritas. I wish that that Mm. little coffee shop and wine bar was real. And like, just all the people there. Um, well, really that's like that. Serena Bowen's whole like true north world is that in Vermont. I think it's supposed to be based on Burlington. Mm-hmm. I think, yes, it is set like right out in or outside of Burlington. So yeah. do you ever get in a mood where you want to like, I'm having a vibe right now. Like I really want a Northeast book or I really want a California sun book. Do you ever get in a mood like that? So you start picking your read based on its location. I would say mostly in the holidays for sure. Cause you want that like 
holiday, Christmas, winter, snow vibe retreat. Um, and then, I mean, there is, there is a little seasonality to it. Or if you're going somewhere, then, yeah, you maybe want to read something in that area to get excited. Um, yeah, I think um, I'm always sort of looking for a small town. I think given that I don't live in a small town, I live in a suburb outside of two very big cities. And I think a small town sometimes sounds really great, um, which I think probably comes in with like, you know, Veritas, um, like Wyoming and Montana. I know they're not the same state, but I like, like <laughs> use them a little bit interchangeably. Like um, the Manhunt series. Can I just go there where Vanessa Vale writes? Like, yes, you know, I want to go to that coffee town. shop. I want to have pizza yeah. at that sto- brick oven pizza place. And um, yeah. I also want to check out Sex O'Clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sex o'clock sounds amazing that's fantastic but yeah I think the small town but then like I love Chicago Chicago is one of my favorite places in the world so it was not a surprise to me when I sat down and wrote about all like my favorite series so many of them were set in Chicago um okay so we're gonna move on a little bit um we recently interviewed Melanie Harlow and she talked about world building. And this was really um, insightful for Carolina and I when she talked about this. She said when she builds her small town, she likes to give the outline and give us a chance as the reader to color it in. No, actually, it's it's she said it a little differently. I think. OK, she uses the actual town as the outline. Like the real town as as like the coloring sheet but then so it's her structure and then she colors it in with her own world well yeah I guess I heard it different and I heard it differently because we talked about this in the quick shot for runaway love that we did because we talked about the diner because I asked you what color did you imagine the seats we know that the ground floor is a checked black and white checked floor but yep but the diner booths, what color did you imagine those diner booths to be? Because she never says. Right. I imagine it'd be red. And I thought they'd be yellow. So, but everything. But because, because, right. Well, and, and the biggest part of what she was saying, too, is that she doesn't, she knows readers don't like a lot of description. So she plays on some basic narratives and stereotypes that everybody is familiar with. If you have a diner with a black and white checked floor, like you have an immediate picture that comes to your head. Mm-hmm. Now, mine might be my red, my booths might be red, Becky's might be yellow, but for the most part, our our diners are going to look and feel the same. Right, and the layout's like, going to be the same, and we're going like, to, yeah. you know, you're going to have booths, you're going to have some tables, you're going to have some like stools at the bar, like yeah, you're you're going to see the pass through from the kitchen to the servers, like. There's some basics that she uses that, which is a really interesting, like, shorthand to get the reader there in a quick tempo so that she the story can continually move on. Well, she's not spending pages of description, mm-hmm. and that is something that will lose me in a book. But she has to also, like, here, I'm going to put my reading teacher hat on for everyone. Not everyone reads the way we do like not everyone can picture something in their head so they will probably picture just some people will picture just what Melanie gives you and nothing more yeah well and and then we do have some authors that create pictures of made-up places by talking about the landscape so I think Catherine Mm -hmm. Cowles is someone that does this really well she talks about the long drives from town to the houses, the distance people have to travel, the mountains or the cliffs, the fog rolling in. Like she builds her worlds by giving us length of time it takes to travel and what you encounter in that one simple car ride. And sometimes that can be almost too much. I sort of like that, like, when they give me a general term, like, oh, it's in the Pacific Northwest, or 
it's in the Northeast. Like I get a general idea of what it's like, but then I can kind of create the place almost where I want it to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. um, maybe that's just okay. So one last place that I would like to travel that is kind of a real place, but has made up things. And that's the Scottish Highlands based on every Julie Garwood book I have ever read. Also, if I could encounter some Vikings, um, like <laughs> Joanna Lindsay had, I'm all in and a couple pirates. Like I'm never going on a cruise ship because the fear of norovirus scares the heck out of me. That being said, that being said, if you're a pirate and you want to kidnap me, I would come on your ship. So, anyway. You crack me up. Yeah, there's a couple of books that I've read over in Ireland, and I yeah. just really would love to go to a little pub. I don't even drink beer, but I would go plunk myself in a pub, and I'd be waiting for my tall, little red, not little, like very tall, red-headed, bulky Irish man. That's what I well, want. Um, Jane Henry has a series, Dangerous yes. Doms. Yep. And that's another one because then you get the castles too. Like <laughs> and the and the coastline, true coastline. <laughs> yeah. Um that you can have out there. So yeah, I'm I'm right there. We're all going to trip to Ireland. VH I'm- Nicholson, she has a series that takes place in Scotland and it has it's about three sisters and it's a small village and you know, it just like take me there like sign me up i'm ready to go um samantha young has the adair series over in scotland and she is from scotland i believe so is vh nicholson yeah the way she describes it i was like what am i doing over here in minneapolis (laughs) like i need to move over to scotland like asap so one of carolina's favorite parts of romance it's the food <laughs> yes. in the books. Give me all the food. Oh, they drive like cravings, legit cravings. We I we were reading um I started binge reading uh Cowboys and Moss Creek or Cowboys Classified, Janice Whitaker and The Diner and the Wooden Spoon. Um, May, who is book two, she makes pies. Yeah, I kid you not. Like I had a hankering. One of the pies that she makes is cherry pie. I love cherry pie. She makes some other. She makes other ones too, um, because she changes them. I was going to say the peach pie is the one that peach pie really gets her guy. Peach and ginger pie. Yeah, Um, I want to try that. Um, but I like jit. Like maybe not even two days later, I was at the grocery store and I picked up a cherry pie because like I had to have, like it was on the brain. Gina Z, her last book in her Boston Hawk series, the woman is a cupcake baker uh-huh. and she does cupcake pop-ups. And I was like, all in. I read cupcakes. But there are a couple of foodie inspired inspired travel romances. So these are places we want to go based solely on the the food food. that is mentioned. Um, And I'll kick it off. Scambles of the Father by Zoe Blake. It's an Italian village, but not Tuscany. In book one, it's the Cavallari family saga. In book one, she eats Cornetti's and plum jam every morning and has coffee and these cornettis are brioche dough croissants so like that gummy eggy enriched bread in a Mm. croissant shape with plum jam yum and then in the second book sins of the sun he makes her this fresh pasta sauce and then cuts up and grills uh ciabatta bread and then layers it with um, the sauce that's over the fire. He layers it with buffalo mozzarella. And they talk mm. about scooping the sauce in the bread or the sauce in the cheese with the bread. Can I just tell you the next night we had grilled pizzas for dinner? And I had a marguerite <laughs> pizza just so we're all very, very clear. Like, well, and I, I talked to Zoe Blake. Her husband's a chef in Philadelphia. So. Oh, like, <gasps> well. That, anyway. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, there are so many, so 
if the book has a diner in it, I want to go to the diner. Like I am completely um, Jessica Prince in the Hope Valley. Her series has a diner and they have uh, like one of their big specials is a meatloaf sandwich, you know, and it's that quintessential vibe. You know, the couple um, runs it and, you know, the wife is um, the server, you know, does the serving and the husband's in the back and they yell each through to each other through the pass through. Like you totally want that experience. Um, and then a proposal they can't refuse. Natalie Kenya. Uh-huh. Like I want to go to her all restaurant, that Dominican food. Um, but I also want to go to the whiskey distillery. Yeah. Um, because I like I need to be there. Yeah. That book. <laughs> I just need to be there. Like she but then there's also like food that is <laughs> I'm just going to have to roll up and knock on somebody's front door because in Lauren Landish's um, Bennett Boys series, Uh Mama Louise makes fried chicken. Now, there's a lot of cowboy southern series where fried chicken is in place, but there's something special about this because in her series, she only teaches the recipes to the women of her, like, the wives or soon to be wives of her sons so it has this layer of tradition on top of that plus you know fried chicken plus fried right? chicken <laughs> um heather do you have any books of places you want to go because you want to eat the food that's mentioned um, in well, the book well I, Miles Family Vineyard by Claire, Claire Kingsley. It's not really food, but it's just like the whole vibe of a mm-hmm. vineyard and the wine. I'm not a huge wine drinker, but I still want to go and just hang out there. Um, again, Jessica Peterson. She's and the thing with her is if if there's a recipe in the book, she'll email it in her newsletter. Nice. She's a Southern lady. She's a Southern girl. Um, I know there is a ton more, and I'm just it's okay. Um. The Villa by Nora Roberts, it takes place in a wine country family estate uh, winery, and it totally has, like, modern, um, oh, what's the Keanu Reeves, um, where he goes to the vineyard and pretends to be the lady's husband in the clouds, maybe, or something? Something like that. Something anyway, like that. it has those big family vibes, but there's a little bit of suspense in it. It's a good story. Um, Three Chicks Brewery Series by Kennedy, or Stacey Kennedy. Yes. You guys. Like, they go to all these beer tastings, and anyway, I'm there. I am there for it. Uh, also... Danica Flynn's her McGregor Brothers Brewery series that takes place mm-hmm. in their small town. Like the beer is great, but like now she started this Irish bar that has like all the Irish pub food. And I'm Oh, yes. I'm there for it. Shepherd's pie. Anyway. Heather has a look like, no, no thanks. Yeah. No, I'm like <laughs> down for it. Um there's a brewery that um uh marie johnston wrote into her i like totally blinking on it but she said it was inspired by an actual brewery and i'm gonna say it and everyone's gonna make fun of my accent far go far go and it's an old train station so nice very cool. i love that i love um that. the Okay, so this is like a double one because uh the villa that's in make it sweet um oh by Kristen Callahan Kristen Kristen Callahan yes so I want to go to the villa because it's a villa um but two all the foods like the pastries isn't it like an apricot apricot tart that he makes for her or something yeah and he the jams and the biscuits and the like like delivered right to your room I totally Please. forgot all about that series, that book. It's so yeah. good. Like, it's such a great I book. I was drooling over all of the food. Yeah. And the way it was, like, described. And Yeah. And we already talked about Jiffy Kate and their New Orleans-based books. And 
all the food that we get in that series. It's just so good. I love it. Um, okay. So we've kind of talked about fictional places we wish we could visit. Is there any others? I have the only other one that I have that I haven't mentioned yet is Kringle Mountain by Krista Sandor because like yes. shenanigans mm-hmm. and outdoor <laughs> Well in the bakery. Um Yeah. Yeah. No. That's um a... I would go to Blue Water um in Florida, the Blue Water Billionaire series, which was like put on by a whole like author collaborative. Cause we it's billionaire women who create this like super cool I just loved it yeah Yeah. I think it's Pippa Grant Claire Kingsley Lucy Score and Catherine Nolan in that series I think um okay so we did ask our community where they would like to visit that is fictional and they came up with Green Valley Tennessee Papillon Louisiana which is Lexi Blake's Butterfly Bayou series which they have an alligator in the middle of town who, like, anyway. Um, Garnset Island by Marie Force. Uh, Blue Moon by Lucy Score. Chestnut Springs by Elsie Silver. Strut Peak by Victoria Wilder. Um, Entrance BC from the Fallen Men series by Gianna Darling. Uh, the Samantha Young series that you talked about. Um mm-hmm. Ardnock, Ardnock Castle. Art, um, yeah, Ardnock Castle. Um, yes. Fantasy. Everybody wants to go to the place that is Akatar. Um, historical Stony Cross Park by Lisa Claypes and Spindle Cove by Tessa Dare. Uh, Brittany C- Nicole has a place called Bristol Bay, and then of course, Friendship Rhode Island, which is in a jam by Kate Canterbury. Okay, you guys. So let's give some transportation inspired books. So these are books that kind of maybe the first set, we're going to go on a road trip. These are books that take place with a road trip, which I like a road trip. I'm a road trip traveler versus an airline traveler. Hard pass on road trips. I love a road trip. It depends who I'm with. Well, I think it's because I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm saying hard You know what, though? Yeah. I guess because we used to travel all the time from Finley to Cleveland, and it's like a two and a half hour drive when my kids were little. My kids are fantastic, fantastic car people. Like, we don't have any problems. Um, My kids don't. I mean, our cabin is three and a half, four hours from where we live, and... My kids aren't the problem. I'm the problem. It's me. The problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> okay. So road trip romance. Do you have one, Heather, even though you hate a road trip? Helena Hunting has one and it was in a anthology and now I totally blanked on it. It was very funny. Okay. Um, Carolina, do you have a road trip romance? Yeah, this one I like I blanked on all of them because I can't. Like, I know, generally speaking, but I just, I can't remember the names of the books. Okay, so here's series. So here are some road trips that I have. Play to Win by Kelly Jameson. They have to drive from Vegas to L.A. It's a wake-up married yeah. romance. Hilarious. She, he just wants to drive and go and get to his new place. She wants to take a stop at the little gas station and go into the little town and sightsee. And they are opposites attract. It is so funny. Mm-hmm. Um Wrong by Anna ja- Anna Jana Aston. Um, she the heroine has to get a ride from the hero from her hometown back to Philly, and she hates him and he needles her because she has her sights set on his brother and he's attracted to her. So lots of witty banter. Um, sure thing by Jana Aston. It's a tour bus company that he's the owner of and she pretends to be her twin sister and the tour guide but she has no idea how to be the tour guide (laughs) and he's on the trip with his grandma who owns the tour company um hilarious hilarious and then for never by aurora rose reynolds they road trip to a private lake they take a jet and then they have to drive into the private lake and it was 
hilarious. Um, okay. What I, ab- I think the the times that it really works for me, it like is the comedy, the rom com element mm-hmm. of it, because there's two people stuck in. It's almost like a um, a like a one bedroom trope. Like there's just a little bit of that. Like they're stuck to each other, and if they hate each other a little bit, that makes it even better because they like get all. St- snippy well it's that forced proximity because you can't get out of the car you can't move away from them and it also is the banter like if there's really great banter it moves the story and you can actually learn a lot about the characters Mm -hmm. in that confined space even if it's only like two chapters long like i think janet astin's wrong it's only like one or two chapters in the beginning of the book that they're in the car together but you learn so much about how much they you know are not friendly and <laughs> she hates him they aren't nice to each other um okay so what kind of books do we have that have private jets because if i am gonna fly i just need to tell you all right now i need to fly private uh yeah so i started one it's um it's a hockey romance um people are raving about it it's called mile high she is the flight attendant for the team um he's a hockey player so far i like it I haven't gotten far though. Um, I have the Dalton Brothers series by Marnie Mann. They only travel by private jet. They yeah. have lots of sex on that private jet. Um, um it's it, like you. It's typically in the billionaires kind of vibes of mm-hmm. things. Who's the other one? Um, well, okay, there's the a Miles group. High. Um, Miles High by um, T. L. Swan. Yes. They don't, well, but book one stopover, they're on a commercial, but they fly first class. True, true. Um, the Playboy Pilot by Penelope Ward and Vi Keelan, it's part of the Cocky Hero universe. Um, he owns the company and she works mm-hmm. for it. One of the great private union, or one of the great private jet ones is Corrupted Union by Jill Ramsauer. Sorry, Heather. <laughs> She's like going to come at me. <laughs> <laughs> for me yes that scene oh my stars yeah. so good um and it's actually so we just announced today at the day of this recording is that jill ramsauer is our june author uh for drunk book club and we're reading I corrupted union i probably won't fangirl too much <laughs> he's gonna have to mute me a lot because i just love her oh my god it's so funny but it's fine um okay private jets we did that destinations or weddings that have like at a certain location book recs for any of those like places that are like the couple travels to a place um i have game changer by kelly jameson he takes her to the wedding in southern they're in chicago he takes her to the wedding in southern cal and then to the family cabin in canada so they do lots yeah. of travel. She's the runaway bride. She is the runaway he, bride. She, he run, oh, I love that book. Is, um, yeah, uh, Natasha Madison has one in her Southern Wedding series where she goes on her honeymoon with um, her guy best friend. And um, yeah, that's a really good one. Do you have a destination, Carolina? Um... I don't have like a specific book rec with it because usually it's I remember them being like more of like the tropical they go like they go to the place you know what I mean like and it's the yeah what do you got Heather wild by Sawyer Bennett it's on my list yes (laughs) I knew it would be that's why I had to I want to I just want to say it wasn't me this time it was Heather who brought him up oh my god they went they go to the U.S. Virgin Islands and I am telling you the U.S. Virgin Islands are so gorgeous. Yeah. They're so beautiful. Go there. Um, Adventures in Love by Aurora Rose Reynolds. It takes place in a small town in Montana that does outdoor adventure camping. And in book one, she's a runaway bride that goes, or I guess not a runaway bride. She just broke up with her fiance. He broke up with her because he was in love with another man. And she goes on this couple's retreat, which is like backpacking and living off the land in the Mon- in Montana. 
so good and falls in love with the tour guide um adrift by swati mh it takes place in um nevada lake tahoe there's the place um and it's all about outdoor adventure and it's a destination like people have to go there but the couple actually he owns it and she's the nanny um Good Hands by Kelly Jamison. They meet on vacation mm-hmm. and then find out they both live in New York City. Okay. I found out that I have a lot of book recs of books that take place with a yacht. Ooh. So yes. one of the uh. most recent reads that I did was Temptation by Jenna Hartley, which if you've not read this book, you guys, he's a zaddy like nobody's business. And the book is so, so good. But there's really like a sexy yacht scene. Um, what do you do? You have a yacht one, Heather? Um. Well, I thought Natasha Madison has one. I just <laughs> read one. Um. Uh, I I just read one this week too. I, Nanny I and the give, Nerd. I can't give it away. Nanny and the Nerd by Krista Sandor. She uh, in that book they go out on his yacht for like the spring break vacation. Um. <clears throat> Made for you by Natasha Madison. Alpha. Oh, I have one. Alpha by find. Jacinda Wilder. They're on a yacht. What What do you have? I got to find it. Okay. I'm like totally blanking. Hold on. Digger Cole has one too. He's a mafia. Like he's head of the mafia. And he like basically kidnaps his daughter's best friend and holds her out on a yacht until he can force him, her to marry him. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Uh Rising Tide by Nora Roberts. It's all about boats and custom boat building. Alpha by Jacinda Wilder. They, It takes place on a yacht and it has like helicopters that come and go. Um, One Night with the Billionaire by Lane Hart. They spend a night together on a yacht. Um, I have a thing for boats, you guys. I don't even um, know. I had a bunch. The Ruthless Gentleman by Louise Bay oh, is wow. on a yacht as well um she is the chief stewardess and he is there to like spy and gather that information would, wouldn't a fun one would be where she's like the chef on the yacht and he's the grumpy been... billionaire mm-hmm. well this one kind of reads like an episode of below deck it's really fun. i've never watched that show oh I've never watched it, but I feel like I need to now that I know I have an obsession with yachts. Yes, you yeah, absolutely do. Sure. Um, do you have any books of people that meet while they're on vacation? Some of these are ones I'm throwing at you. I know. Yeah. Um, I know that they're there. I'm just trying to remember what they are. So I have Muse by Katie uh-huh. Evans. She goes to New York to visit a friend. On her return flight home, she misses the flight and has a one night stand with a guy she meets at the uh, airport. Stays for three uh, days. We the the tryst by they're not on vacation, but no, but they, it's a work conference, so they're not home; they're away. Um, by Lauren Blankley. Yeah. Um. Piece by Piece by Kaylee Ryan. He is at a southern or he's at a southern Florida resort checking it out because he's just telling his friend whether or not he should buy it or not. And he falls in love with a waitress there. That's such a great series if you haven't read it. It's the Riggs Mickey, family. Mickey uh, Miller has that five day fiance one. They go together, but it's like he's his, her fake fiance. Yep. And yeah, that one's good because they're in Mexico. It's a fun little studying. Um, um Harlow James has lost and found in Copper Ridge. They end up sharing. Um, it's over the holidays, so they end up sharing a cabin. Oh, fun! Uh, Love Me Forever by Layla Hagen takes place in a small Southern California town, and they, he's on vacation. Um, Where the Waves Break by Julia Wolf. They meet while they're in the south of Spain. That book. He's a daddy, and she's a good girl. You guys, if you haven't read it cannot say enough good stuff about it um a royal cruise by max walker they're on a cruise in the caribbean over christmas so funny so many holiday antics if you like christmas i can't recommend that book enough it was so good um and the audio is really good too 
um, Gone Wild series. It's a multi-author series. I know that Avery Flynn wrote in it. Kaylee, Katie Roberts wrote in it. Stacey Kennedy wrote in it and two others. Um, it's five best friends that go on a cruise vacation together and they each meet and fall in love with someone while they're on that cruise. It's a, their novellas. They're so cute. Um, they are. And Loved Scammed by Risley Adams. It's a novella that takes place in Turks and Queso or Caicos. Caicos. Because I was trying really hard not to say Turks and Queso, which is what I did for the whole six months after I read that book. I kept saying Queso. It's not. It's Turks and Caicos. Caicos, whatever. Um, okay. For our friends that might be traveling and going on vacation this summer, what are mm-hmm. some books, tips, and tricks you would like to share with them, Carolina? Okay, my number one, please learn from my mistake, is make sure when you're at home, when your Kindle is fully charged. That, I think, goes without saying. But then number two, pick like three books you want to read and download them while you're at home because what happened to me was I didn't do that and I got on the plane and I couldn't read the books that I wanted to read now that was an interesting challenge at that point because then I had to filter to see what was already downloaded that I hadn't read yet um and it that actually worked out great for me because then I got into the um Stacey Kennedy's club sin Sin. series club sin series so which I went down that rabbit hole which was quite enjoyable um but I, there was like specific books I wanted to read and I could not do it so make sure your books are downloaded and that um, goes before and you get in with, the car or you yeah, go the car or on the plane or even when you're ready to return you make your return trip make sure your books new new sets of books are downloaded like you have your one book and then maybe a book a book or two backup so if you're not feeling that book you have a couple options i think this is why airport bookshops sell so many books mm-hmm. <laughs> yes i also recommend um bringing a portable charger and then having like a little bag like a little pencil bag or something that has your portable charger a cord for your Kindle and a cord for your phone and then also your AirPods. That's so smart because then you, if your Kindle dies on the trip and you can't plug it Mm -hmm. in, if you're on the plane or something, then you'd have the battery pack to. The same goes for like my dad has vision issues. So he does a lot of audiobooks when he travels on planes. And so he downloads the audiobooks. So it's the same Mm -hmm. on your Kindle, wherever you enjoy your audiobooks, download it. Download it. Or if you carry multiple devices, like your cell phone, your Kindle, your iPad. Download the books in all those locations because then you can pick it up. If you lose one and you can't charge it for whatever reason, then you have a backup device. (laughs) Also, if you're a person like Becky and myself, and I'm guessing Carolina is in this, if you need to have your read on your Kindle show up, then it's not going to show up if you're not online. So then you have to log on to your phone and pull up the Kindle app so then you don't lose your streak. Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah. Heather lost her streak on vacation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What? Okay. It was a super fun day, so. But you know what, though? I lost mine. I got super busy one day and then we had drunk book club and it was after midnight before I went to bed that day. And it was like. I didn't get any reading done. No, I lost my stuff. I actually, I actually wish I could turn that feature off because uh, it is one thing that it has actually taken away joy from my reading sometimes because I like there's certain periods mm-hmm. where it's like the pressure to like get in there. I, I don't want that pressure. I have so many other like more important pressures in my life that I really don't need that. Well, I wish I could like mute it, turn it off, that. like or lower it. Sometimes you know, like on certain um, apps, you can rearrange how things show oh, up. Oh, so like, you don't I, have to find it. Like I don't have to see it in like above the fold. So it's only for me. I have to go looking for it. It's not in my homepage. It's, it's um, if it comes up on not on my Kindle, my on my, my paperwhite Kindle. But if I'm going in and reading on my phone, it comes up. 
Yeah, on my phone, it's in the back. I have to go looking for it okay. under insights. I don't have don't, it displayed. How do I change that? I don't Same, know. I'm going to say Becky says she was like, oh, wow, that's actually not true. I'm going to call her out right here and now. You're so mean. She changed her time zone to Pacific. <laughs> so she didn't lose her streak. So that is not true. No, she wasn't like, oh, well, I did that once, but then there was it. another nope. time I totally lost it because I had to start okay. over recently. But yes, you're right. I have gone back and changed my time zone on my Kindle so it'll register the previous day so that I can get some page reads in so I don't lose my streak. I mean, Jeez thank God for Pacific time zone being so far behind Jeez us, right? Heather. Nice. <laughs> but I also had to tuck that little nugget away for me when I have to do that too. <laughs> This is why we're friends. Um, okay, so we hope you will spend your whole summer vacation reading all the fun books. We will have all these book recs, as many as we can remember, listed on our on-the-shelf show notes. Um, if we miss one, Amanda will let me know, and I will add it. We do have a wiki that Amanda is creating that lists every book we mention in every episode. It is pinned in our Discord. Um, but if you email me, I will happily send you a PDF of it. Um, as of this airing, we have mentioned almost 700 unique titles in 2023. Wow. Already. 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 Oh, and it's mid-May. Oh, my goodness. So Amanda is doing She's the doing the Lord's work. All these, yes. <laughs> um, okay, everybody. It's that time for book. Of the oh. week. Okay, it's book of the week time, my friends. Uh, Carolina, what's your book of the week? Um. So after I don't know what episode we recorded, but y'all were talking about Carrie and Ryan. And so I ended up going down the um, rabbit hole of the Redwood Pack series. So I'm I'm in a little um, you're a little PNR hole there, aren't you? PNF, wow. Yeah. Well, we can talk about this in a minute because I'm blaming you for an, another <laughs> book series I can't continue right now. <laughs> Becky's mean. Becky's well, evil. So, She's a mean, mean, mean person. This episode is dropping the Sunday of Labor Day weekend. So starting June 8th, we, what? Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Day. Sorry. Just speak up when I screw up. Seriously. Because <laughs> um, it happens often. Um, I'll announce it after we get through our books of the week because we're doing a special cliffhanger three book se trilogy series and Carolina currently hates me. Um, but she loves me because honest to God, it's another one of those series that I've been telling you for three damn years to read it. And He's you wait an evil, evil, evil book. Okay, so you're witch. reading the red what is the series that you're reading? Uh the Redwood Pack series. Okay. Well, I have to write it down so I can put it in our on the shelf show yes. notes. Uh Heather, what is your book of the week? My book of the week is Iced Out by Veronica Eden. It actually released on May 15th. It is a new college hockey romance. It is like super anticipated. It east, it's Easton and Maya and oh, it's so good. And we get to talk to her on Thursday on YouTube Live. I'm very excited. Yep. And you guys, uh, after this drop, she'll be able to go over to YouTube and rewatch that uh happy hour i'm super excited for the opportunity to talk to her so i did a reread and i don't often do rereads but i kind of have been on a social media hiatus um i'm kind of taking a step back i've deleted it off my phone outside of instagram um because i need to reset some priorities in my life so i decided to do a reread and read something historical romance which i haven't what? done in a minute so i reread almost heaven by Judith McNaught. The book still holds up. It is lovely. It's an enemies to lovers. It's a second chance romance. It has all the feels. And Ian, who is the hero, like, I love him. He is absolute book, book boyfriend. And Elizabeth is smart and cunning and practical. 
and everything you want in a heroine. And I just, I adored her. It was so good. Also, this book has one of the most amazing grovels. It's like a three-tier plan to get her back. And it involves him having to heal a family, um, like, rift, take on a title, and then he has to show up at a ball that he does not want to go to with his grandfather, and then he has to dance with all the old ladies of the ton. Like, it's so good. <laughs> like, he grovels so hard. Anyway, so, so good. Um, so, Almost Heaven by uh, Judith McNaught. Okay, Patreon update. Happy year anniversary to Terry, Kimberly, and Amanda. Um, Amanda's only been doing this a year. And she's already like taking over the wiki. Like, go, Amanda. But actually, mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have Terry, Kimberly, all of our Patreon members. We're so lucky. We have some of the best Patreon members in the world. Um, you guys make our community outstanding. I'm really excited to announce with this episode that our swag packs are getting a little bit of a glam up. Um, so in the past, we have randomly, when we could, when authors helped, uh, we've had one or two author stickers uh, provided to us by authors um, in our swag packs. So we featured Kelly Kay, we've featured Krista Sandor, we featured Emily Silver, uh, Ophelia Martinez has also been featured uh sawyer bennett has been featured but now starting in june every swag pack will feature at least one author swag and you guys when i sent this email out i thought okay i'll maybe get four people that answer me 22 at this recording have said <gasps> we can't wait to send you swag and it's starting to come in and when i tell you oh my gosh these are next level swag packs i am like so excited. Um, so you uh, you will be surprised to find more than just stickers in these swag packs, not just bookmarks, but maybe free ebooks or free <gasps> audiobooks. What? Nice. what? Yeah. So swag packs go out to the fancy drink, cold brew, and queen bee tears. And we are still um, we will still have fun buzzing about romance exclusive stickers, mood reading cards, and other fun things. Um, these are mailed monthly on the fifth of the month, and we do ship these internationally. There is no wait time on this perk. It kicks in as soon as you join. So if you join in the month of May, I will send you May swag pack. If you join in the month of June, I will send you June swag pack. So I am super excited about this next step on our swag packs. Um, all members of the Patreon also get exclusive episodes along with perks like Drunk Book Club and episodes. Because of our amazing Patreons, we're able to bring you three episodes a week, and we're still working on our goal of 75 members so we can plan our first ever book retreat. So that's Patreon. I'm so excited, you guys. Just wait. Um, so Back by Popular Demand is Summer Reading Challenge. It is going to be a scaled back version this summer. We will still... Uh, be lots of fun, but you can find details on our website. It's going to run from June 21st, the first day of summer, through July 31st. So a little shortened time frame also. Um, and you can find a list of all events at bookcaseandcoffee.com slash events, including happy hours, IG lives, and book clubs. Um, and then we're going to our first signing, guys. Woohoo! Yeah. I'm so excited. Um, we are going to the first ever HEA Readers Event in Indianapolis, Indiana in November. And over the next couple of episodes, we are going to let some of the participating authors introduce themselves. So for this time, we would like you to get to know signing author Maggie Gates. Hi there. I'm author Maggie Gates, and I am all about raw, relatable romance. In my books, you'll find sexy book boyfriends who are obsessed with their partners and heroines you want to be best friends with. Don't let the small town label fool you. These books are hot. When my characters head to the bedroom, the lights stay on, the doors stay open, and you get every detail. That is, if they actually make it to a bedroom. If you're looking for a starting place, check out What Heals Us for a swoony age gap romance between a firefighter and a kindergarten teacher. Things heat up when they get snowed in a cabin together with just one bed. If you're looking for something a little more gritty and irreverent, try my book Cry About It. It's a savage enemies to lovers that will have you laughing, crying, and sweating. My greatest hope is that you feel seen through my books. 
As an author, I strive to tell stories respectfully but authentically. Content and trigger warnings for all of my books can be found through my social media platforms for an informed reading experience. All of my books can be found in paperback and ebook on Amazon and the Kindle store and are enrolled in the Kindle Unlimited subscription program. Happy reading! Thanks everyone for joining me for this episode. It was fun. Thanks for having me. Um, Until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 